Let's lift up our hands and clap our hands and appreciate the Lord Jesus this morning because He is in the house. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. Give your neighbor a high five. And a welcome to our service today. It's a beautiful service. It is a beautiful day. Amen. Well, have the pressure of having your seat and uh, we'll let you know how we put a bit to do in a few minutes. Uh, it's a good and a beautiful day. I think I'll start with the visitors. Uh, our visitors, if you have come to worship with us today, you are a visitor. We want to see where you are seated. Officially welcome you. Officially uh, appreciate you. And... Uh, so thank you for choosing to come and worship with us. If you lift up your hands, we'll see where you are seated, our visitors. Our visit, thank you very much. Let's appreciate our visitors over there. Anybody else, just lift up your hand if you are a visitor. Ask us, please. Can I ask them to stand? If you are a visitor, please. Uh, can I ask to stand? We can see you well. Let's give our visitors our issue clap. One, two, three. Amen. Jesus loves you and me and all of us. Please make that place where you're seated your seat if you are looking for a, for a church. Don't chop anymore. Don't look more. Make that your seat. If you are visiting us, please, wherever you come from, take our greetings. And after the service, there's a place prepared uh, for you. So don't be don't leave in a hurry. We'll give you directions towards the end of the service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Receive greetings from our bishop, our daddy, and our mom uh, uh, in this house or this house. Uh, we talked with bishop in the morning. They are in Mombasa. They are preaching today from 10 in the church, the uh, Reverend Church in Meritini. The church is celebrating their seventh year. So today is their seventh anniversary. So they have been there from uh, Wednesday for Revo meetings and they are waiting up today. And they will be back today. They will be back tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Have you received their greetings? Yes. Lest you say I did. I did uh, <laughs> bring them. Amen. Today is a beautiful day. A wonderful day. We have been saying always, let's arise and behold, the day has come. Can you help me project First Chronicles chapter twenty nine? Uh, if you hear me in, this, in, the, in the beautiful studio, in the container, uh, you know we don't see them nowadays, but very soon we'll be seeing them somewhere up. First Chronicles chapter 29 from verse number 6. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse number 6. You can give it to me in the message Bible. Let's, let, let's read the message Bible. I like it uh, myself. Amen. I, I know it will not be the original. There are those of us who must read the original King James Version that I will read. But this one says, Lady and willingly, the heads of families, leaders of the tribes of Israel, commanders and captains in the army, stewards of the king's affairs, stepped forward and gave willingly. Amen. All of us are there. The heads of families, they are here. The leaders of the tribes are here. Amen. The commanders, the captains, the stewards, or the archers, and the, you know, everybody stepped up to give. Verse number seven. This is what they give. Value. They give 5,000 talents, 10,000 talents of gold. These are the 327 tons, 18,000 talents of bronze, 10,000 talents of iron. Verse eight. They, uh, and anyone who had previous jewels put them in the treasury for the building of the temple of God in the castle of Jehiel, the Geshonite. Verse 9. And the people were full of a sense of celebration, all that giving, and all, and all given willingly, and also freely. And King David was. Exempulant and Bishop was. Then he blessed the Lord in 
God in full view of the entire congregation. Blessed are you, God of Israel. He gave thanks. Amen. Jump to verse number 14. Oh, from there it's giving thanks. Pray. And who are these people that we should presume to be giving something to you? Everything comes from you. All we are doing is giving back what we have been given from your generous hand. And then continue says, as far as you are concerned, we are homeless, you blessed, what the last, like ancestors. And they talked about the piles of stuff that the people gave to the Lord. And this morning we are just come to give to the Lord. Amen. That he can do the cathedral willingly, cheerfully, and we want to give to the Lord. Amen. I want to get about, about uh, three containers. We'll have, uh, I want to ask Pastor Ann to come and uh, join me. We'll receive your envelope because we're given an envelope. Amen. And I'll begin with LCC members. LCC members are the people who tell us to build the cathedral. So they will be the first. Uh, I also want to ask the share, uh, Josephine. She has a lot of faith that you are going to give all the money you can give her. Amen. Uh, she also stand and receive from you. All we did, just bring it in order and we speak a blessing over. David spoke blessing upon the people and for sure. Josephine can. Oh, I received this one first. And she can also receive ours first. I think it's good to receive ours first. Eh? So that. Uh, you don't uh, receive others until you receive yours. Praise the Lord. Raphael, see with your idea. I'm a better Sunday school. Okay. Amen. So we'll begin with it. We're going to do it very fast so that we can preach the word. And uh, also finish in time. Praise God. ASCC members, let's start with you. You can go anywhere and uh, just speak a blessing over your life. And for sure you are blessed. Amen. Maybe the worship team should be singing. Uh, we are building. I don't know. Worship team, please, you can come and help us. I like what uh, King Solomon did when they were giving the offering. They were singing and uh, blessing the Lord so they can help us. Whichever song they had, they had planned to sing, we can sing with them as you come. LCC members, are we done with LCC members? After LCC members, we we'll go to the ministry team. Ministry team. Ministry team, please, let's come. This is, he's a chairman. The chairman of the cathedral, I say my, amen. Thank you, Charles. Ministry team, your eyes and come. Ministry team members, it's always good to be to be the one to be leading. Amen. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord bless you. God bless you and increase you. May the Lord bless you and increase you. I'm going and singing is something it's out. Amen. Now, I want to ask all the cell leaders, if you are cell leader, start. And I also want to appreciate the cell leaders, by the way. If you are a cell leader, can I ask you to start? Thank you, Nasho, you're blessed. All the cell leaders, if you are cell leader, can I ask you to start? Cell leaders. I want, us, I want us to appreciate these people. They are doing a beautiful job. I mean, let's give a clap to Jesus for the cell leaders. They have opened their houses for us every week. They are pastoring us in the cells. They are praying for you. And you do not belong to a cell, please. You are denying yourself a lot of blessing because they pray for you. Now, bring your envelope. The cell leaders. If you have brought it's okay, but if you haven't, please bring your envelope. May the Lord bless you, cell leaders. They are wonderful pastors of ourselves and our homes. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Bless you. Too. And you, sir, leader, if you stay around uh, our shops, there you are.
here. I want the rest of them just just sit down. Amen. What does it sound? Where we lived, it said people gave everything they had. Amen. Whatever they had. But they wanted to pray this keyboard in a way that we can all listen to and hear this keyboard. See keyboard you can to ski here and have your doesn't belong to the church. Amen. Although he bought it, he wants to give it as an offering for the cathedral. Amen. So what I want us to do, this keyboard costs about 95,000. I want us to buy for the cathedral. Amen. Takatu inundue. Bwana sifiwe. Simutete pesa. Ndaka 95,000. Ili tuinunue. Asanti. Amen. Bring the money. Tuinunue. Amesema ambayeta as a cathedral gift. Now, because he hawezi jenga cathedral. Sidiyo. Ita hii palakini hawezi jenga. So, I need the money. We buy it. Amen. 95,000. Amen. Thank you. Pray as up, I take my ninety five thousand. I'll buy the new one. I who is still Amen. Thank you very much. Let's buy it. What a gift to the cathedral for Modoy, and I know he'll be blessed. Yeah, bring whatever you have. It is your name. You are in the kingdom, O oh Lord, exalted. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hands are power and might. In your hands it is to be great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you, we praise you for your glorious name and those attributes 
which that name denotes. Father, in Jesus' name, this morning we thank you. As David praised you, dear Father, when people give, we praise you, dear Lord, that this morning we have given, dear Father, for the building of the cathedral. I want to pray, dear Lord, that Jehovah God, your people, they have given, dear Lord, I pray, because you own all things. Open your heavens, dear Lord. Release, your dear Father, your blessings. Release, dear Father, resources upon your people in the mighty name of Jesus. May they never lack in anything good, dear Lord, because God, you will provide for them. We give you thanks and we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We know how much you have uh, given for the cathedral. Come, you cannot address it with you. Ama? Well, there's a new If it's not enough, we still buy it next time. Amen? Because we must buy it so that we can also redeem uh, his bread and be blessed. Well, thank you, thank you, David, for that. Ah, beautiful work. Amen. Amen. Are you now ready for the word of the Lord? Yes. I have a few minutes to preach. Don't you worry because you don't know what I'm preaching about. And you don't know how many points I have. Whenever we get. Amen. But as if he will. And I want to pick again from uh, where we have been. Where Bishop left us on Sunday. Talking about putting, putting down stronghold. Putting down stronghold. This is the year of, uh, year of overflow. But we have agreed that before we overflow, before we can experience overflow, there are things we need to root out, there are things we need to pull down, there are things we need to tear down, then we plant or build and plant, and then we can experience overflow. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse number 10. The Bible says in the New Living Translation, Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 6, again, which was a key verse given last Sunday, I'll read it from the Message Bible. It says, The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing that entirely massively corrupt culture. They are powerful. We use our powerful God's tool for smashing what philosophies, tearing down barriers, erected against the truth of God. There's so many barriers that the enemy has erected against the truth of God. That's what we are saying. We want to tear down. We want to pull down. Then it says, fitting every loose thought and emotions and in past in the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready. Ready, but I'm ready. At the hand for clearing the ground. Hallelujah. Clearing every ground or the ground of every obstruction, building rhymes of obedience into maturity. Tearing down, pulling down strongholds. In this life, there are many challenges. And sometimes there are many disappointments. And sometimes there are characters, there are attitudes. There are giants that sometimes do face us as you're moving on. And so this morning I may pick on one or two, depending on the time, or some of the stronghold that I'm asking God, would you begin by helping me to tear it down, to bring it down? Stronghold number one that I want to pick on today is the stronghold I'm calling discouragement. The stronghold of discouragement. Stronghold of discouragement. This life sometimes can be so discouraging. You may look at your life and it may have begun possibly in a year. Maybe your business didn't pick up well. Maybe there's a job that you have been waiting for and it's taking too long and it is very easy to get discouraged. It is very easy to allow a stronghold to build in our lives. That something happens and discourages you. And from that point on, your life is not moving. 
But this morning I'm here to declare that discouragement shall not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Because that stronghold, we must bring it down today. We must pull it down. The spirit of giving up, amen, has to give in and give way in the name of Jesus Christ. And so today, one of the prayer I'm praying is that may God pull down every stronghold of giving up in your life. If it's a situation that got so discouraged that you're almost giving up in your life, I'm asking the Lord this morning, may the spirit of David, who never gave up, come upon you in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of Joshua, who never gave up, come upon you today in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of Nehemiah, who never gave up, amid the discouragement, be upon you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 46, we know the story of David. David is facing Goliath. In verse number 46, the Bible says, This day the Lord do deliver you into my heart. You know, David is facing Goliath. And Goliath has appeared for so many days upon the Israelites. Every morning, Goliath would appear. And by the evening, they were so discouraged. But David appears on the scene and he says, This day the Lord will deliver you in my heart. And I'll strike you, take your head from you, and this day I'll give the carcasses of the camp of the of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. And all that may know, all the earth may know, there is a God in heaven. May this day, may that be a prayer. That today, you spirit of discouragement, the Lord, the, the Lord will deliver you into my heart. You will no longer overcome me. You will no longer torment me. You will no longer have your way. Because this day, sometimes, and maybe you are here this morning, and you may have gotten a report from the doctor that you don't like. Or there is an information that has come over this week. Or there is something that this we yeah, are begun and you're struggling with you asking God am I going to come out of this I want the ones in the book of Isaiah 46 verse number 4 to speak to your situation this morning that you can hear what the Lord is saying to you God is saying to us today and I'll keep on calling you when you are old I'll be there bearing you when you are old and agree but I like what the Bible says. I have done it and I'll keep on doing it, carrying you on my back and saving you. That is in the message. And if you give it the message Bible, I'll carry you on my back. God is saying in that situation that you might be in, God is reminding us and, and he's speaking to your situation, to my situation. And he's saying, I have done it in the past. Amen. And I'll keep doing it. I'll keep this story that uh, of this man who in a vision, he would see, as he was walking, he would see some, a pair, two pairs of footprints in the desert as he was walking. And at one, at one point in his vision, instead of seeing two uh, pairs of uh, footprints, he only saw one. And because it was the moment that he was so discouraged, he goes to God and asks God, how come you let me when I was in, literally in need of you? How comes in my times of hardship. I can only see my footprints. I cannot see your, fo your footprints. And God spoke to this man and this person and told him, when you saw one pair of footprints, I was cutting you on my back. I was cutting you on the back. And that's what Isaiah is telling us. God is saying, I have done it. I will do it again. I will carry you on my back. I will save you out of your situation, out of your trouble. Amen. Because sometimes we get ourselves here. And as I'm breathing, that God, that this morning, every stronghold of discouragement in your life has to give way. Amen? Sometimes it is so bad that we give up. We even say, why should I bother? Nobody cares anyway. But despite the circumstances, discouragement doesn't have to overwhelm us. You can learn from it, benefit from it, but you can also overcome it. Amen? When we are discouraged, it is our faith that is put on test. But remember that God is also a God 
in times of hardships, in times of discouragement. In fact, he is a God in times of the things that are not expected. He sees things before we see them. He saw the situation before you saw them. And that's why Paul is telling us, and we know that all things, in Romans 8.28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. It is God is saying, I knew it even before it happened. I knew it before it happens. I am still your God, even in your situation. So this morning, every spirit of discouragement, every struggle of discouragement, we are telling it, it has to give way in the name of Jesus Christ. There are about three root causes that I was able to identify. Three root causes of discouragement. Number one is lack of confidence in God. Lack of confidence. Sometimes when we lack confidence in God, discouragement sets in. Because you are wondering, asking, God, how come I am in this situation? Where are you, God? I cannot feel you. I cannot see you. The moment we lack confidence in God, discouragement sets in. The moment we lose trust in God, discouragement sets in. The moment we are not even very sure that God can intervene in my situation, in a situation, discouragement to set in. The second thing is when we have confidence, we have no confidence in ourselves. You have looked at yourself and you have defined yourself. You have looked at yourself. You have condemned yourself. You have looked at yourself and you have legalized, like Bishop said. You have believed it that you amount to nothing. You have believed the situation cannot come to an end. You have believed that you cannot come out you have no strength within yourself to even believe and trust yourself. Discouragement will set in. Because you are not very sure even of yourself. You look at yourself, you devalue yourself. Discouragement will come in. And my prayer this morning is that you realize that is not where you're supposed to be. That is not your portion. Third dream, it is when we lack hope for tomorrow. When tomorrow looks like it is darkness, it's dark, it's like you look at tomorrow, you're, you're wondering God, where is my tomorrow? Can I face my tomorrow? And the, the singer sang and said, because he lives I can face tomorrow, but sometimes our tomorrow looks very scary Amen Our tomorrow looks very scary, you're wondering God, do I want to face tomorrow? But this morning I'm saying that can become a stronghold of discouragement and a root cause of discouragement when you're not sure of tomorrow. Amen. I met a lady as I was speaking, my wife at uh, the school where she is, and uh, she was so discouraged because of the former one. And I know we, here we are. Amen. Because your child has passed the exams. In the school where the child has been admitted, you feel no. How is it about? And so you are so discouraged because of that particular situation. I'm here this morning to declare to us it doesn't have to be our story. Amen. Because God has a school for your child. Amen. God has a school for you. And now we need to, to believe is just. Trust and believe God. Well, I was telling with one of our, one of the main city members uh, who happens to be in uh, the middle of uh, 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 Pastor Jeroge. He was so discounted at one point. And you see, the son is asking, what happening? And all those. And, and then he started moving up and down. And one day he just drove to Kenijana, to Rodriguez, to a school called Moibirodi High School. And uh, he didn't know the principal. Maybe possibly the person who connected him might be here. Because I think, I don't know that he's uh, and he was telling us when he got there, he was told there is no place completely, it's full, it's completely only packed, and he's not even taking anybody. But then he told the, he told the secretary, I was, I was just wait here and pray. And he waited. And the principal was in a, in a meeting. He waited up to five in the evening. Around 5.15, that's when the meeting ended. And when the meeting ended, he saw a member of this church, a man in the his men's group. 
Amen. And I hope you can pick something there. He is in the means. So he went to greet to him and he's asking him, do you have a child here also? And he's telling him, me, I'm looking for her. Him, me as a child, I'm looking for her. For us, a uh, place for my son. I don't even know the principal. I'm looking for the principal. And where he was, this, this, this uh, member is greeting somebody and they are cheering and he's telling him. And then uh, the, the, the man went to the, to the staff room and uh, he's telling, I don't know the principal. He's telling him, the principal is the one who was studying here. He's a principal. And so they moved in where he was and uh, the story is that when they went there and uh, Beria is introducing uh, Pastor Jeroge and uh, to the principal telling him this is, he is one of the leaders in our church. And the principal told him there is no space completely. You can see the line outside there. That's why I'm even running away from there. Then Pastor Jeroge told him I've been here from the morning and I was told the story. Then he said, but I pray to go to touch you. I prayed to God to touch, to touch you. He didn't say a word. He was even taking tea. He stopped taking his tea. God touched him. He went. I told him, don't leave there, stay there, wait there. He went, got the form, gave the deputy, and deputy, he told him, take this to that man who is there. So right now, the boy is in school. Or he's going to be supporting tomorrow, Monday. But what I say, what I'm saying is sometimes we get discouraged. Okay, we meant to appreciate the Lord. Let's appreciate the Lord. That's what we meant to do. This can easily set in. And I want to declare to you, we are still looking and waiting for your son or your daughter's school. It is coming in Jesus' name. It is coming. That which happened to Pastor Jologa, it will happen, it can happen to you. Don't give up. Amen? Don't give up. Just like David didn't give up, may that be your story. David never gave up. He did it. May the spirit of David fall upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. And God is speaking to you who is discouraged. You see the, the, the book, the, the words in Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua is another man who was in a situation. You know, you can be in a situation that even God Himself knows you'll be discouraged. Amen. Yani uko pahali hata Mungu anakuangalia anaona utakuwa discouraged. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2 says, God looks at Moses, at Joshua, and tells Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Thou therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and all these people to the Lord which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. The situation looks very, very bad because he, what he's saying, he, Moses is dead. And Moses was the hope of Joshua. Moses was the strength of Joshua. Moses was everything that Joshua looked to. I don't know what is your Moses. I don't know who is your Moses. But God realizes that this guy will get discouraged. So he tells him, he is dead. But now, arise. Amen. If you go down to verse number 6, 7, and 9, three times God tells Joshua, be strong and be courageous. When God repeats something three times, amen, I believe the situation was very bad. Otherwise, he would have not repeated it. Three times. And he is telling him because he knew, Joshua knew that God, to him, God was Moses. After all, he had not seen Moses the things he was doing. When they went, there, when they went to the, the, the river, Moses do something. When they were in the desert and they had no food, Moses brings food. Are, are you getting it? I imagine you see Joshua is following Moses, and they reach a stage where there is no water, and Moses does something and hits a log and there is water. So Joshua is wondering now, this guy is dead. So what will happen to us? But God tells him, I know he's dead. But what I want to do is be courageous. Be strong and be courageous. God is telling Joshua, discouragement may set in because of a situation like look, look so dire and look so tough and looks like it is so empty and it looks so bad. But what I want to do is to arise and I'm speaking to somebody this morning 
And I want to speak to you that today is a time you need to arise from that particular situation. Don't allow discouragement to pull you down. It is you to pull it down. Amen? Amen. That stronghold is you to pull it down. In verse number 8, God tells us, Joshua, all I want you to do is focus on me. Amen? And the message Bible says, and not for a minute let, let, let this book of the Revelation be out of your mind. Ponder. Make it on the day and night. Make sure you practice everything written in it. Then you will get where you are going and you will succeed. To clear down discouragement, God is telling Joshua, take the focus out of yourself, out of your resources, out of your ability, out of your experience, and focus on God. Today, if I was to focus on my ability, Amen? And my experience, if I was to focus on my resources, believe you me, by the end of the day, I'll be so discouraged. Amen? And I know it is your story also. If you have to focus on what you have, if you have to focus on your story, if you have to focus on your resources, if you have to focus on your experience, you'll be discouraged. But God is telling Joshua, I want you to take your focus out of yourself and focus on me. This word, I want you to meditate on it day and night. Listen, read, practice my word day and night. And that's my prayer for you this morning. That may the spirit of Joshua be upon you today as you pull down the spirit of discouragement in Jesus' name. Amen. Then God speaks to Nehemiah. I'm bringing three people that were discouraged. Amen. God looks at the spiritual name of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, reading from Nehemiah chapter 1 all through, Nehemiah, they start the story of building the wall, repairing the broken walls. And somehow, halfway, when they were halfway, they all got discouraged. Amen. They all got halfway. And my prayer is that we shall not discouraged at then one point. When I was reading this, uh, I, I told God, our cathedral must finish. We'll not get halfway. Amen? Amen. By the way, the update so far is that now we are out of the ground. Now you can see the columns are up. Eh? So we have done with the, with the, with the ground work of columns. The moment you see columns are up, then at the, uh, you, 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 uh, those of you who are built, you understand. Because from tomorrow, they'll be working on a uh, now doing some link beam around the column. The moment you see the link beam, then you carry a mare and a kusoka too. It will go very fast if you can have Amen. And that, that will be our story. That we shall finish it completely. For Nehemiah, Nehemiah has begun. If you look, you read uh, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 6. The Bible says, So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined up together. Joined together up to half its height. For the people had a might to work. But at this particular point, it is where the gospel so discarded. In verse 11, and all this time our enemies were saying, they would know what to hate them. Before they knew it, we would be at their throat, killing them right and left. That would, stop, that would put a stop on the work. The Jews who are with their neighbors kept reporting. They have us allowed it. They are going to attack. If we had it once, we had it ten times. Now, in that particular situation, two things happens to Nehemiah and the people. Strength completely failed them. So when we are discouraged, the result sometimes is our strength will fail us. When you are halfway, your strength will fail you sometimes. Discouragement will set in. And I want to declare this morning to somebody who began a project. And that project is halfway. It has to get finished in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't give up. Don't allow it. Don't allow strength to fail you. You know, when I was, when I was going through this, uh, the word that came into my, to my heart is uh, what the society has, term, has given us a term, midlife crisis. Amen. And uh, 
the professionals, they will even tell you the evidence or the symptoms of midlife crisis. I told God, that is not my question. Your midlife can be a midlife joy. Doesn't have to be a midlife crisis. Who said you must have midlife crisis? It is nowhere in the Bible. Mama, have you seen a midlife crisis in the Bible? Now, if it's not in the Bible, I refuse it in Jesus' name. Halfway, midlife? It will be a midlife joy for you in Jesus' name. It will be a midlife joy for me. Okay, I know some of you have passed it and you're wondering now, what are you talking about? Hold on. Amen. Even the young who are here, that will be a portion in the name of Jesus. Not only will strength fail sometimes, but the enemy will also speak to us. In Nehemiah chapter 4, where we are reading, they are even saying, we have had it once. In fact, we have had it ten times. It is where the enemy will speak to you until you accept it to be true. But I want to declare this morning that not be a portion in the name of Jesus Christ. In verse number 10, the Bible says that the people of Judah began to complain. The workers are getting tired. There is so much rubble to be removed. We will never build the wall by ourselves. You know, that is whereby you reach a state whereby you have accepted the truth, you have accepted that you are discouraged and you remain there. You have already accepted. In fact, you have done what Bishop was telling us. You believe it. Or you excuse it. Then, you revise it. Then you justify it. And then finally you, you defend it. That's what they are doing. The, 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 the Jews have written a statement whereby they have said we will never build the wall by ourselves. They were defending it. My prayer for you this morning is don't defend that strong any longer. Don't defend it. Put it down. Tear it down in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a high time to fight on. Amen? To pull down the strong. Remember you're not just fighting for yourself. Nehemiah told them in verse number 14. And I looked and I lost and said to the nobles, the leaders, and to the rest of the people, don't be afraid. Remember the Lord's great and awesome. Fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your house. Amen? And fight for the cathedral in Jesus' name. Amen. Fight for your life. Fight for your career. Fight for your business. Fight for your son. Fight for your daughters. Don't allow discouragement to pull you down. It's a high time we need to rise up. Fighting means fight. I mean, we have to fight on. We have to fight on. There's somebody called uh, R.G. Ree who said, and this looks tough, said, if you don't get up and meet the devil in the morning head on, you are going in the wrong direction. Don't rise up in the morning and meet the devil head on. You are going in the wrong. We have to fight on for our lives. We have to fight on for that which belongs to ourselves. We will not give up in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not give up. We will have to rise and fight. May the spirit of Nehemiah be upon you today, even as we fight for our lives. We fight for our houses. We fight for our daughters. We fight for our sons. Don't be discouraged. Maybe you are your son. You look at them and you are telling, what has happened in their lives? It's a high time not to be discouraged. It's a high time to rise up by faith and pull down every stronghold of discouragement. Praise the Lord. I feel like I want us to pray. Forget about the other strongholds. I told you don't know how many they are. Amen? But because you don't know, I feel we just need to pray. I want us to rise up. And because I'm seeing if I start the next one, I have about five months, uh, minutes or so, so let me not start the next stronghold. We'll pick it one of these days. The stronghold of discouragement. And my prayer for you this morning is that the spirit of David, David who faced a giant called Goliath, I don't know which giant you are facing this morning. That giant that you are facing this morning, I don't know, but we want to pull it down in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of Joshua, Joshua looked new 
Joshua was discouraged. And no wonder God is telling him even before. And God is telling him three times, please, hey, be strong, be courageous. Why? It's because the moments that we get ourselves in. I want to ask the worship to come and help us. Let's, I want us to worship the Lord for I want us to speak to the Lord. I want to ask God, Spirit of the Living God. You have God who knows our situation. He knows where you are right now. He knows your situation. I want you to speak to that situation. I want to speak to that that is discouraging you. You speak to it. You tell it. You spirit of discouragement. Right now, putting you down in the name of Jesus. Right now, bringing you down in the name of Jesus. Doesn't have to overwhelm you. Find it may be there, but don't have to defend it. We need to do is to bring it down in the name of Jesus Christ. Just lift up your hand as we worship the Lord this morning.
we thank you and we give you praise. Yes, sir. That you're telling us to take the focus away from our situation. Yes, away from us. That we can focus on God. You told Joshua to focus on you. You told Nehemiah to tell the people to focus on you. And this morning you are telling us in the situation as a covenant Lord we are in that we shift the focus not onto the giants of discouragement that we shift our focus not the stronghold of discouragement but we focus on you God. We focus on you God. This morning you are here and for sure you know you are feeling so discouraged. The situation around you is not in any way better. But telling God today release the spirit of David upon me that I will not give up. I will fight on to the very end. You pray this morning Spirit of Joshua, come upon me to be courageous and to be strong and pull down and tear down every discouragement. The spirit of Nehemiah, you are saying, yes, I'll pull you down. I won't allow the enemy to overcome me. If that is you, you lift up your hand as you make this prayer. May the Lord because he knows your situation. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying, dear Father, as we lift up our hands, Jehovah God, to you today, my prayer, dear Father, is that God may the spirit of David come upon us, your people, dear Lord. May every giant of discouragement right now be delivered in our hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we shall fight on, we shall kill it, we shall destroy it. In the name of Jesus, may the spirit that was upon Joshua of being strong and courageous be upon your people today as you deliver us to your father from every spirit of discouragement. In the name of Jesus, I pray for a spirit of fighting on that your people will fight for their lives. They will fight for their families. They will fight for their children. We shall fight for that which is of a good cause upon our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare the enemy is defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. You spread of discouragement. You are at our feet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. You hear this sanctuary, you are not born again as you put your hands down. You are not saved. An enemy has discouraged you from just saying yes to Jesus. You know he cares, he loves you. He is telling you, you cannot fight on your own. You can't fight this battle on your own. David could not fight on himself. He said, the God of Israel that you have moved will give me the strength. For Nehemiah, he knew the strength was in God. And to you this morning, the battle that is raging in your life, without Jesus Christ, you cannot make it. You can't fight. You need God. You need Jesus in your heart. So this morning, if you're not born again, when you want to receive Jesus, and he can give you the power, the strength, the spirit to fight on, and to keep on in this life, don't give up on him. He has never given up on you. Just lift up your hand. We'll pray with you in the name of Jesus. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Here I am. I need Jesus in this walk. Just lift up your hand. We'll see it wherever you are. And we'll pray for you in the name of Jesus. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to dedicate my life to Christ. The devil has beaten up me left, right. But I want to get back on track. And I pray with you now as we wait at the service. Are you there? I give you a minute. Just lift up your hand. Keep the hand 
up. Keep your hand up. Just keep your hand up. You see, this morning, I want to partner with Christ. Just lift up the hand up and we'll pray with you. Anybody else? Saying you want to give your life, you want to dedicate your life to the Lord. You're saying this battle, life can be so discouraging, but I want Jesus because with Him, I know I'll make it. Are you there? You just need to come here and we'll pray for you, but you can also lift up your hand, we'll see it, and we'll pray with you in the name of Jesus. And just come, my, just come, my, just come, my sister, just come, my sister. You are a winner, you are a victor in the name of Jesus. The devil has no hold over your life. He has no power over your life. He is defeated in the name of Jesus. Anybody else, you want to get my sister as you pray for my sister? I want to give you another minute. God loves so much that God has not want you to struggle on your own. Why struggle on your own? Why not allow him? Amen. Are you coming? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for our sister. And we pray for victory, dear Father. We declare that, dear Father, today, as she joins forces, dear Father, with you, every devil and every house shall be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for my sister who has also joined and saying, Yes, because, dear Father, I know with you she is a winner in the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody else, you are coming, you are coming, just come. Father, we thank and we give you praise today. That you're in the business of being your people. Won't you just meet up to me, Lord Jesus? Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Today, waiting away, I receive you. But you may give me power to move on in this life. Every spirit of discouragement will have no portion in my life because I will live for Jesus. I will walk with Jesus in the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my sisters, dear Father, our God today. I decree and declare dear Father, they are winners, they are victors, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. And every stronghold, dear Father, that the devil could have, dear Father, had on them today upon this altar. I declare it is done, dear Father. It is cut off and destroyed in the name of Jesus. And I want to pray the blood of Jesus Christ over their life, dear Lord. They will enjoy this work with you from today in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate the Lord. Thank you for my sisters. Amen. We'll have them and let's have our few sisters to take them to the believers class. Amen. I'm being told by Francis to make a just have a seat. Thank you very much before I invite uh, thank you watching before I invite Rachel to continue. In our bulletin uh, the article for this week, the cell discussion is not correct. It was for week five. Uh, it was by Mystic uh, you know the copy paste? Is technology, it happens. It happens. It's supposed to be week six. It's not for week six. So if you are a leader, lift up your hand and you'll be given the discussion for week six. If you are a leader, you'll be given four copies that you can be able to use it in your cells for this week. Remember, that's what we are discussing in our cells. Don't discuss anything different from what you're being given. I mean, that you can be in one direction as a cell. So if you are a leader, you should get four. Give four copies. There are enough for the cell leaders. Give four copies. The cell leaders, what they can give a few members uh, for discussions. Isn't that what, what, what about it, son? Amen. How much do you raise for the people? Zuki. Prefix 95,000. 49. Wow. Let's approach it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Really. Balance the. Huh? What? Balance. 46. It was? It was 95. Amen. So we will get it. We'll get it from the second service. Then the balance we'll get it next Sunday because we have to buy it. God bless you. Congratulations. 